Okay, I'm just going to quickly show you how to count, um, use Yates's continuity correction formula to work out uh, chi squared. Now, if um, if when you work out your degree of freedom, okay, remember the formula for that. That's the number of rows take away one times the number of columns take away one. If that happens to end up being one you need to use Yates's continuity correction formula to work that out okay you, that's the alternative way to work out this the better way to work out chi squared because it gives you because of the degree of freedom one there's some issues I'm not a statistician I'm not sure too much as to why it's better but when it's degree of freedom one you have to use this formula instead now let me just find my students work and I'll um, he's got the two formulas here so this is the original one you would have been taught in class Okay, and this is the one you're going to get examined on. But for the purposes of your project, if your degree of freedom is one, you must use this alternative formula here, which is a little bit more complicated here. This formula here for chi squared. And I'm going to sh I'm going to show you how to how to uh, do that. So I'm going to do it in Excel. So here's my students' data. This is ob observed data. And remember how you work out the expected data is using the column column totals and row totals, okay? And um, and you and just remember how you work out the degree of freedom, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out chi squared using Yates's because for this table now the, the thing is this to remember if you've got two rows and two columns, when you take away one from each one of those, the answer is going to be one. So if you've got a table with two rows and two columns, then your chi squared is always going to be sorry, your degree of freedom is always going to be one. Now, um, just to give you an example of when it's not a degree of freedom one, this table here doesn't have a degree of freedom one because the actual data is this box here. Okay, it's not to do with the column headings or the totals. It's actually the raw data. There's two rows and two and three columns. So 1307, 0, 13, 5. So you would do two rows, two take away one times three take away one, which gives you an answer of two. So the degree of freedom is two for that table. So you wouldn't use Yates's, you'd use the original one. Right, so that's enough for me waff waffling on about that. Let's actually work out Yates's now. First of all, I'm just going to copy the numbers in. So 17 is this cell here corresponding cell is 12.48. I'm just going to write in next to it. 7 is the next cell along. It doesn't matter what order you do it in, but the corresponding cell has to be the one next to it. 11.52. 9, the corresponding cell is 13.52. And 17, and the corresponding cell is 12.48. Okay, so in the formula, um, the brackets first, and inside the bracket you've got FO take away FE inside this vertical line bracket, which means absolute value. So first of all, you want to take the observed take do the observed take away the expected. So equals observed take away expected. And then copy that all the way down. Okay. Right, that's O take away expected. Right, the, the, those vertical lines actually mean absolute value. Okay, so what you want is the absolute value. And the, what that means is it's basically these numbers but all turned into positive. Can you can see that the middle number is negative. So quick way to do it is just do absolute value equals ABS and then copy that cell, close the bracket, and then it just basically takes each number in there and makes sure it's a positive value. Right, then the top half is you need to do that FO take away FE, take 0.5 off it, and then square that. So basically, open a bracket, select the cell, take away 0.5, and then square it. And then copy that all the way down right okay now 
that's the top half of the fraction done. You want to divide that by Fe, so you want to take that number, divide it by the expected, and then scroll to the bottom, make sure it does it for each row, and then um, so they basically by scrolling to the bottom you're doing this calculation for each row and then what you want to do is do the sigma bit now which is to total that so add them all up oops sum select that column okay and then this number here is your uh, chi squared that's it so that's how you work out chi-squared using Yates' continuity correction formula. It's probably better to use Excel. Um, you could obviously do it with a calculator and just type up the results in a table into the spreadsheet, but the good thing about doing Excel is basically you can just basically put borders around that and then uh, fill in the titles. Now you don't want to do things something like this. You don't want to type in FO, FE and something like that because it looks really nasty. So in the next clip, I'll talk to you about how you can um, use Word to make your formulas look neater. So that's Yates is done. Only, only use it if your degree of freedom is 1. Okay.